Now we're starting a very important part of statistics, which is a measure of spread of data. We like to know how much variation there is. And um, our joke today is variance is what any two statisticians are at. You get it, they're at odds with each other. But actually, statistics is about variability. So we're going to learn about one of the uh, basic measures for variance called standard deviation. So first of all, we're going to take a look at this set of data. I have it up here, negative 4, negative 2, 3, 4, and 6, and they're also in this table below. And let's do something simple. Let's find the mean, which we can do by adding up all the points and dividing by how many there are. There are five in this data set, so n is 5. All right, so I got a mean of 1.4. Now, how far is each point from the mean? That's one way of measuring spread, right? Well, we're going to call this the deviation. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate these spreads. All right, negative 4 minus 1.4. Make sure the most common mistake in doing this is mixing up the order, like trying to put the most positive one first. It's always your data point minus your mean, and that gives you the deviation. The interesting part when I add them all up is I get 0. So let's explore that a little. Now, uh, this is a really cool applet that's on GeoGebra that's going to let me explore a more powerful way to measure spread than IQR. So first of all, um, these are some data points that I have here, and we've taken the average or the mean, and that's 1.4. And the cool thing is, if I move the data point, you can see how this is dragging the mean lower as I pull it further away from the group, right? So. Um, Basically, if I wanted to look at the spread of the data, one thing I could do is look at all these numbers here. Now, this would be, this is, E is 4.6 above the mean, D is 2.6, C is 1.6 above the mean. Uh, A and B are both below the means, and you can see this should show a negative, but the software is a little picky, and it's showing the negative here. So these are below the means. So these are called the deviations, which is the distance from the point to the mean. I can't really use the total deviation because that's zero. And zero is not going to tell me a lot, a lot about the spread. If I move the point, it's still zero. Even if I bring these over this way, it never changes from zero. So I don't want to use that point. I don't want to use just the deviation. So how can I make this not add up to zero? I could square them. Which brings us to, let's go ahead and square the deviations. All right. And so I'm going to take the x minus x bar, which is the deviation, and square it. Negative 5.4 squared is 29.6. Negative 3.4 squared is 11.56. And I just keep doing that. And I add them all up. The total in the second column right here is called the sum of the squared deviations. All right. Now what I want to do is take a look. If I were to add two more points above and below the mean, would the squared deviations increase or decrease? So I'm going to do some work on the side here. All right. So I'm going to add a point two units below the mean. Uh, that means it's going to be 1.4 minus 2.0. It's negative 0.6. That's the point I'm adding. Now to do the deviation, well, that's going to be that point minus the mean. Oh, I get negative 2. That makes sense because deviation is how far above and below the mean. So that deviation is negative 2, all right? And when I square it, I'm going to get 4. I'm going to add a point 2 units above the mean, which would be 3.4, and that deviation will be positive 2, and when I square it, I get 4. So I would take this 71.2 and add these this extra 8 to it. So adding more points almost always increases the sum of the squared deviation. Uh, the only time it might not is if it was exactly right on the mean, because that would give you a deviation of zero. But other than that, most of the times, adding points increases the deviation. So why would that be a problem? If we wanted to compare different size data sets, then the problem is, is that the larger data set will probably have the larger sum of squared deviations. So how do we fix it? We normalize it. I could normally divide by the sample size, but we're going to actually make a slight adjustment because we're dealing with samples, and we're going to divide by n minus 1. So this is going to give us a formula for something we call variance, how much it varies. 
and that symbol for that is s squared when we're talking about samples. The formula is x minus x bar, the deviations, and then we have it them squared. And that sigma sim, uh, symbol right here is means you add them up. And then we divide by 1 minus the sample size, or the sample size minus 1. All right, so if I'm going to calculate that, we're going to do this for our above example. Where does that come from in our data? Well, here's the deviations, here's the squared deviations, and here's the sum of the squared deviations. So that's the number we want. And we're going to just take that and put it over n minus 1. Our sample size, we have five data points, so it's 5 minus 1. Uh, we're going to divide by 4, so that gives us about 17.8. Now the units for variance are squared. So, you know, that's 17.8. That's a great measure to do things, but it's 17.8 in our units squared. And we prefer to go back to our units. So the way to undo that is to take the square root to get s, all right? And that's called the standard deviation. So if I'm going to do that for the example that we're looking at, I'm just going to take the square root of 17.8, which is roughly 4.22. So the standard deviation for our set of data is 4.22. Now, if you actually have the entire population of data, so you have every single data point available, you do a slight adjustment because then you don't have to worry about variability of sampling. And instead of dividing by n minus 1, we just divide by n. So variance for a population is denoted by sigma squared. And actually, that will make the whole thing a little bit smaller. Uh, because we're not having to worry about variation of sampling. So we would have x minus mu over n. And some of you are going to say, uh, what's that symbol? Mu. Well, that's basically the mean for a population. It's like x bar, but it's a special symbol when we have all the data for the population. Or if we're trying to talk about the hypothesized value for a population. So let's go ahead and look at another example. Here are the measurements of the level of phosphate and blood of a patient and milligrams per deciliter of blood made on six consecutive visits. Determine the mean and standard deviation. Well, the mean's pretty simple. It's um, 32.4, which I got by adding all these up and divided by the number of data points, six. So it's just the total here divided by n and I get 5.4. I'm going to subtract 5.4 from every one of these points. So 5.6 minus 5.4 is 0.2. 5.2 minus 5.4 is negative 0.2. Don't forget your positives and negatives. And you keep going. All right. And you can make sure you didn't make a mistake by adding these all up. If you get zero, you're fine. So go ahead and square these. So 0.2 squared is going to be 0.04. Negative 0.2 squared is positive 0.04 as well. Then we get 0 0.64, 0 0.25, 0 0.09, and 1 squared is 1. Adding them up, the sums of the squared deviation is 2.06. All right, so we're going to use that to calculate our variance. Our variance is going to be 2.06 over 6 minus 1, which is 0.412. And then usually we like the standard deviation. That's our big measure. We'll just take the square root of that and get 0.642. Now, another part of our lesson today is looking at how do we determine how if data is spread wider than expected or not. And the way we do that is we compare our standard deviation to the average. So we're going to take that S that we've just been calculating and put it over the mean for the sample and then multiply by 100%. Notice that the, this is called the coefficient of variation, CV, and it does not have units. So what is the coefficient of variation for the levels of phosphate in the example we just did? Well, we know that our standard deviation is 0.64 and x bar is 5.4. So when I go 0.64 divided by 5.4 times 100%, I get 0.119 or 11.9%. So our spread is about 12% of our data, of our mean, sorry, of our mean. Okay, so for any, there's one other theorem I'd like to show you, which is Chebyshev's theorem. And it's kind of telling you about how standard deviations 
can um, tell you where most of the data is. And he did this amazing theorem where it doesn't matter the shape of the distrib uh, distribution. Later I'll teach you about normal distributions which are very well known how they behave. But this works for a uniform distribution, a skewed distribution, all sorts of distributions. It's crazy. And he said that the proportion of data um, for more than you know one standard deviation away you can figure it out by 1 over k squared, where k is the number of standard deviations. So if I want values within 2 standard 2s or 2 sigma of the mean, well, how many of the values, how much of the data is in there? Well, I'm going to go 1 minus 1 over 2 squared is 1 minus 1 fourth or 3 fourths, or basically 75% of the data is within 2 standard deviations of the mean. For values with three standard deviations, I'm going to go 1 over 1 minus 3 squared, which is 1 minus 1 ninth or 8th ninth. Roughly 88.9% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So for the blood phosphate example, even though I don't know the distribution, I can tell you what values we expect to contain at least three-fourths of the data. Well, first of all, if we want three-fourths of the data, that means we're doing two standard deviations away. All right, and my um, I want three-fourths um, within two standard deviations of the mean, which is 5.4. Well, how big is the standard deviation? Well, we already figured it out. It was 0.642. So I'm going to take two standard deviations. That's 1.28. I'm going to add a uh, subtract that to go below 5.4, and I get 4.12. All right, and then I add it to go above 5.4 and I get 6.68. So that means at least three fourths of the data will be between 4.12 and 6.68. Now I can do the same thing again for eight ninths of the data because that's the 3s or 3 sigma rule. And what I'll do is again, remember the eight ninths is within three standard deviations of the mean. All right. So there's my standard deviation again. Now I have to multiply by 3 instead of 2. So I'm going to go 1.92 below the mean and 1.92 above the mean. So below the mean, that takes me down to 3.48, 5.4 minus 1.92. Above the mean, 5.4 plus 1.92 gives me 7.42. So if I want to get a big capture even more of the data and I want to make sure I get at least 88.9% of it, um, I, those will be between the values of 3.48 and 7.42. Now, uh, one thing a lot of you will not have access, you don't own graphing calculators, and it makes it a little hard to calculate standard deviation if you don't have like a, you know, a graphing calculator with a little spreadsheet sort of option in it. So the cool thing is I made this bit.ly and it's on my website and I actually have a little video on that page which shows you how to do it, but let's go through how to use it right now. So if you open this link up, you're going to see these cells here, right? You're going to enter your data in column A. So here's the data from our example. Now, you're going to probably be doing different problems, I hope, and so you would delete any points you don't need, add any extra points you do need, and ignore column B. Now, technically, you could do some more data in column B, like problem two, if you wanted to, whichever. But normally, for basic instructions, ignore column B. All right. Then you're going to click on top of column A so that the whole column is highlighted. All right. Just like you do if you've ever used a spreadsheet and you click on the top of the column to get the whole column highlighted. Make sure the statistics tab right there is highlighted. Okay. Then click on calculation, which is right there. Once you do that, you're going to get this screen. So you're going to click on one variable right there. And if you uh, go ahead and click on, you should see this screen pop up and you can click on more right here so that you can see the complete statistical report, which I'll show you next. So here's the complete statistical report for our data. All right. The mean can be found at the top, and remember that's uh, denoted as X bar, okay? Means for samples. The sample standard deviation is the S of X. Now, if for some reason we're doing population standard deviation, then that would be the sigma of X, which is just above it. Most of the times we're using this bottom one. Further down, you can find additional st st statistics such as the median right here. 
And you can also see sigma of x and sigma of x squared, which are used in another alternate formula for calculating standard deviation. I will have that video posted up for those of you who are curious about it, but you don't really need to use it. Most of the software does it for you. Notice, I will ask you for variance, but variance is nowhere on this list. Well, how could we find it? Well, here's your hint. Variance is s squared, so we're just going to take that s of x and square it, and that will give us a variance. So I would take this 0.64, I'd probably do about four digits at least, and square that, and that would give me a very good estimation of variance.